Good evening, my brothers, sisters, and friends. And before we start our talk, I would like to invite you uh, for maybe five, six minutes of uh, sitting meditation. So could you please uh, find yourself a comfortable poster? Relax your shoulders. You can put down your purses your hat, anything that you feel, try to sit in such a way that you feel comfortable. Keep your back straight and then relax your shoulders. Meditation is the practice to help us to calm our mind. And because our mind wander a lot, so therefore, we try to bring our mind to calm. And one of the best way to do is uh, to sit and enjoy your breathing. You can close your eyes so you can uh, be uh, more easier for you to mindful. Follow your breath. Focus to your nose where you are able to realize that you are breathing in and you are breathing out. Do not force yourself to breathe. Let your breath only breathe in and breathe out. There is nothing as precious as our breath because if we stop breathing, we may die. All our plan, our schedule will be done if we are unable to continue to breathe. That means we are unable to continue to live. Keep your life smile, relax yourself totally. And now you are realizing that you are breathing in and you are breathing out. When you're breathing in, you can name this is in breath. When you're breathing out, you say this is out breath. Do not think about the past. Do not worry for the future. Dwelling yourself in the present moment. Breathing in. You know when you are breathing in, you enjoy. Breathing out, you relax.
breathing in. I am a flower. Breathing out, I am fresh. While you are breathing in some other thought coming to your mind, realize it and go back to your breath. Do not let any other thoughts carry you out of this present moment. Bring yourself to this present moment along with your breath. When you are able to come back to take good care of your breath like this, it is time for you also to take good care of your whole body, like your eyes, your ears, your heart, your lungs, because if we worry too much, we make our heart working so hard. We always open our eyes and see so many things. We are rarely allow our eyes to rest. Now you can close your eyes and let your eyes have some time to rest. You try to breathe peacefully in order to make your heart soft and calm. You try to reduce the temper, your temper. your worries, your suffering, in order to allow yourself to have few minutes to relax and rest. We all know time flies so fast, so therefore every minute we live a minute we live, a minute we practice and enjoy. Touch deeply the present moment. Relax your shoulders, close your eyes, enjoy your breath. Do not try to breathe. Let your breath normally in and out. All you need to do now is sit, relax, 
and enjoy every single breath you make. Take your light smile. Meditation means when we're able to come back to the present moment and drowning ourselves to the peaceful moment is called meditation. Good afternoon, my brothers, sisters, and friends. Today is Saturday, November 21st, 2015. This is my third week in Australia, and tomorrow, today and tomorrow will remain my last two days in Melbourne and have some uh, Dhamma Talks activities with all of you both uh, Vietnamese-speaking and English-speaking. Please allow me to express my deep appreciation to each and every one of you who you spend your precious time to help me in the last three weeks. Some of you have worked silently. Some of you put a lot of effort, a lot of work. You put everything behind from your home your children, and you are willing to devote your time to help me to make these three weeks possible. And you know that your work never waste. Everything you have done, especially all the video to record all the talks, will help for many people around the world especially the Vietnamese community. And I would like to take this time to share with all of you my deep appreciation, especially this evening, this afternoon. This is not organized before. This come recently after I met many young friends and I realized that uh, maybe we will have some time today to share something about the practice. So before we start, I would like to um, hello to all of you and I wish you have a good evening. Thank you. <clears throat> In our Vietnamese uh, history, and we have a, a beautiful story and also a sad story. There was a young couple who get married. When the wife get pregnant, and he did, she did not have a chance to share with her husband that she was pregnant. But her husband had to join the army. So after he left, the wife 
deliver the baby and she have to you know take good care for the baby for a few years because a long time ago you know when we joined in the army it's very rare that you can come back home and uh, visit and there's no nothing in, uh, convenient to contact your family no telephone no uh, message no fax no email you know when you left home and we all think that we never have a chance to see you back so the husband joined the army for a few years and one day he come back home and all the village very happy to see him back with many other young men when he go back home he met uh, his wife and also his little, little, little son he never expect to have a son because when he left he didn't have a chance to hear the news but his wife told him this is your son this is our son and he also very happy so in the tradition when you come back home after the war in order to express your thankful to your ancestor she he asked his wife to go to the grocery and buy some food so they can make some food and offer to the to the ancestor to express their gratitude to the ancestor protect them bless them so they come back home safety so while the wife left home for the grocery the husband playing with the kid with the son and he say my 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 dear honey my dear son come here i would like to hug you i would like to kiss you and the son refused they said, no, 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 you are not my dad. You are not my dad. My dad never come home in the daytime. My dad only come home at nighttime. This is danger. When you hear something like this and you have a lot of doubt and you are also very angry. Why? The kid said that because you always trust the kid. Because you believe that kids never lie. So when the kids say, my dad only come home at night. So he have a doubt in his, in his heart, in his mind. But he did not ask. So after the wife come back home, she cook and she present all the food on the altar. So he come to the altar and offer the incense. He bow, few bows. He stand up, he rolled the rug. He did not allow his wife to have a chance to bow to the ancestor. Because in his mind now, his wife is not a good wife. She engaged with someone else. That's why this son is not his son. So he believed that. But he said, I am, a, I am a husband. I cannot talk to her directly about the situation. So if she done something wrong, I expect her to come and talk with me. So he expect his wife to talk with him. But the wife also think, I never done anything wrong since he left. I have done my best role as a wife, as a mother. He come back home. He's so cold with me. He did not talk to me, especially since I come back from the grocery and I reflect I have done nothing wrong. So she keeps silent also. She expects he has to come and talk with her. He also expects she has to come and talk with me. The communication between the husband and the wife very short after back home from the war. 
a month later, she could not stand anymore, and she did not know. She did not know why her husband treated her like that. He cried. She cried so much, and one day she made the strong decision that to commit it to suicide. So she jumped into the river and she died. After she died, the husband have to make uh, arrange the funeral funeral for her. So the husband come home so lonely, so sad, and at night the the baby cry. He have to st wake up and take care for the baby. And now his shadow reflect on the wall. And the baby tap his his father, Mister, Mister, that is my husband, that is my father, that is my father. You know what? Every night, my father hold my mother hold me like this, and she talk to the shadow. She talk to this man, but this man never talk. This man keep silent. Do you know who is that man? The shadow. The shadow of the wife, because when the wife miss her husband, and at night they don't have the the light bulb, they 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 use the 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 the, the lamp, the candle, and the, her shadow reflect on the wall, and she pretend that is her husband, and every night she look at the shadow and she talk with the shadow. The misunderstanding. Now he realized. Now he realized. He was wrong. He was misunderstanding his wife. But it was too late. Now, if you go back to Vietnam, you still can see a small pagoda that people build. That small pagoda to commemorate. That's you know. Lady, who sacrificed a lot for husband, for family, but because of the misunderstanding, she killed herself, and that is a very sad story in Vietnam. And today I would like to share with many of you about the story, and this is a true story. <coughs> but what can we learn from the story? The communication. The communication. In our daily life, all the understanding or misunderstanding come from conversation and communication. We have a lot of technology to help us to contact. Do you realize that? We have telephone. We have cell phone. We have text message. We have faxing machine. We have email. We have so many things for us to communicate. But sometimes we able to communicate with technology, but we unable to communicate between human and human. Especially between husband and wife, children and parents, brothers and sisters, cousins, we are unable to talk. Have you ever feel that happen sometimes in our daily life? Sometimes we don't want to talk to that person just because of something we do not agree. And the more we disagree, what do we do? We show the disagree. We show our anger. And when that person see the way we behave, what do they do? They behave back. They respond. You don't talk to me. I don't care. I don't talk to you either. 
And sometimes we think, you are the one who need to talk. I am not. Because each of us, we hold a very high pride in us. A very high pride in us. I am. I am husband. I am senior brother. I am a wife. I am not wrong. So many I am. But we we never willing to come to each other. We can run. We can come to anyone around, but we cannot come to that person, even just room to room, only one wall. Next door, that person just next door. But we are unable to come and visit. This happens a lot in our daily life. We cannot talk to each other because of our misunderstanding. We can sit during the meal to send text message to our friends day to night. But we cannot send a message for our parents or our brother, our sister. Sometimes you call your mom upstairs or your dad upstairs to come down for dinner, for lunch. <coughs> You cannot talk. You send message, Dad, come down for dinner. Have you ever sent message like that? This is something we need to reflect. Is that the right way to do? Thanks. We need, but when? Because if we are in the same home, why can we not talk to each other? Even you call, Daddy, come down for dinner. That will make your house more warm, more cozy, more family than just send a text. We have a cell phone for emergency contact. Let's say if someday you cannot talk to each other, you're angry at each other. You may send each other a text expressed how you feel. But that is only a small message to bring each of you back closer. To help you to relieve your misunderstanding. But the final is you still need time to sit down and talk. Communication. Sometimes Misunderstanding make a hole. Even your room is next to your brother's room, but the two brothers cannot talk. The two sisters cannot talk. Husband and wife cannot talk. So I ask you to practice sitting meditation. This is the technique to help us to learn how and what is called reflecting. Reflect means you have time to come back and see ourselves. When you are so busy, you have, have no time to reflect, unless you spend some time quietly to reflect. When you're running around, when you lost your key, you cannot find your key unless you sit down and see and think back. Where is the last time you sit, you stand, and when is the last time you use your key? Two minutes later, you can find your key. Only when you're able to come, you're able to see things clearly. The story, what we learn, is very reality. Maybe it's happened a long time ago. But this story may come back and may happen every single day in our daily life, especially in this society. We have a lot of friends. We have a lot of technology. We may spend hours in front of our laptop, our desktop, our Facebook, many, many things like that hours and hours but we don't have even 10 or 15 minutes to sit down with our mom with our dad what to call dinner together 
So if you have the habit to make yourself a bowl of dinner and go to your room, and I hope that you can change your habit. Everything is a training. You never have this habit before, and now you have become a habit. So once we realize this is a negative habit, then we try to do something back to make ourselves become a positive habit. This is what we call Tu. Have you ever heard the word Tu in Vietnamese? Tu, you don't have to shake the head like Thai. You don't have to wear the robe. Tu means fix yourself, correct yourself, change yourself, transform. Make it newer. Anything that you did not have it yet, try to make it possible. It's called Tu. Tu. This is permanent Tu. <laughs> but this is only the, the outlook. I shave my hair. I have my robe. This is only the outlook. I still need to do a lot in order to make my inside change too. If I have a form of a monk, but the way I behave, the way I react, the way I live, nothing caught like a monk is not good enough. So where is the deep transformation inside? Many people, they spend years in the temple, but they never change. So they only do with the word, but they don't really do with the action, with the practice. Make things become possible. When you eat too full, your food cannot digest, you get sick. Same thing, when you learn a lot, make sure whatever you learn, digest and become reality. Become something that touch you in the daily practice. Tu is not for young people only. Tu is not for senior. A day you still live, a day you need to do. A day you become a human, a day you must change. Because the environment is important. Do you know that we have four kind of food? four kinds of nutrients. First, what we call edible food. Edible food means food that we intake, we swallow, we chew, we swallow to, to nourish this physical body. That's why we must be very careful what kind of food that appropriate for the physical body to take. Sometimes you are not healthy. You cannot take that dish. Then try not to. Because when we eat, we want to intake the real, the real nutriment, the real nutrition for our body. So therefore, we must we must know clearly what kind of food we need for the body. You live in this society. You must socialize with your friends. You have party. You have wedding party, birthday party. But you must know when and, and how is appropriate way to take some drink. If you're under 18, you cannot drink. you over 18, you can drink. But just drink for socialize not to turn yourself into addicted. When you practice the fifth trainings that you receive today, the five mindfulness trainings, the fifth one is, be careful what your daily consumption. Anything that intake for your body, make sure it gives you health, not sickness. This is what we call Edible food. Edible food means be careful with the food you intake for your body. Smoking. 
It's not the right food. It's only waste money, kill your lung, shorten your life, make your second body become second smoker. She, that person will be more sick. Smoking totally no help. Then why we need to smoke? Drugs, alcohol, those are all not the right food for the body. So we need to reflect. I want to inform. Every day we have two different kind of food. Food for the body, food for the mind. So about food for the body, be careful what kind of food that we can take. The second food, what we call sensory impression. This is what, how we in touch every day. You take this food by your eyes. Let's say some of the thing you listen, you feel so happy and that becomes something so strong to support you, to encourage you. So this is also the food by the way you hear. Do you, uh, when, you uh, when you have some friend, and if you're, you're, you know, every time when you hear you, your friend call you, you're so happy because you miss his voice, you miss her voice. So we, we take the food through six senses, eyes, contact, ears, ear, you know, every day you're in touch with things. You watch television every day. We must careful what program that we're able to watch because some program never healthy at all. We have the right to watch movie, but choose the right movie to watch because some movie only, you know, give you more desire, more passion, more anger, more violence, no help. Internet, very technology very convenient. Whatever you want to search, you can search. But with mindfulness, you only search things you want to learn and know. But that gives you positive learning. Sometimes, internet only gives you negative learnings, negative images. The more you look, the more you Read, the more you watch, it only give you more violence, passion, desire, no help. So sensory impression is another kind of food. We in touch every day by the way we see, by the way we hear. Hear something that encourages you. Watch something that helps you to learn. Sometimes conversation, after our conversation, you're just more angry. Help us. So make sure you have the right conversation. So if you misunderstanding your wife, your husband, you misunderstanding your mother, your father, you have to express that. If you cannot talk directly, you can write a letter. But before you write a letter, make sure you water that person first. This is how you make it. Dear mom, let's say you get angry at your mom. Dear mom, I would like to tell you that I love you so much. I appreciate you so much because you have put a lot of work, a lot of effort to help me. But lately, now you come to the main point. You water that person first. And then you come to the main point. <coughs> lately, between you and me, we have little misunderstanding. I feel disagree about this and that. Maybe the way you do it, you have your own thinking, you have your own right. But I need to know that. Can you please tell me? 
You know, if you share with all your heart, if you, why we write? Because when you write, you have a chance to correct your words. You have a chance to reflect on your words. What are you writing? When you talk, when you talk, the chance to break the communication easier because sometimes when you talk with your anger, you cannot control your words. And remember, once the words speak out, you cannot take it back. Vietnamese people used to say, every single word you speak out is like, you know, it's faster than the horses. Because after you speak up, people receive it, they angry, they cry, or they happy right away. You cannot take it back. One day, there is a student come to her, uh, his uh, teacher, and ask, Master, accidentally, I talked to my mom in a very rude way. I hurt my mom a lot. Now I realize that, can I do something to apologize? And the master used the pillow. He opened the pillow and he threw the pillow up in the air and all the, the, the what do we call it? Uh, cái cái gì quên rồi. <laughs> Cotton. <laughs> Flew everywhere. He tried to bring all of that and put back to the pillow. He asked the student, take, collect back and put back to the pillow. Even he tried so much, he still cannot make completely. And the master said, remember, when you talk, it's like you throw up the pillow and the cotton will flow everywhere. Even how much time you try to bring back, to put back, you still cannot collect them all. After you apologize, maybe your mom said it's okay, but you know what? The wound still stay there. When you use the nail to nail on the table, oh, you realize you don't want it. You take the nail off, but what happened to the table? You make a hole. Sometimes when you hurt someone, by the way you talk, by the way you behave, even you apologize, but the wound still stay there, like the hole of the table. <coughs> so what is the practice here? Mindfulness. Mindfulness means carefully before we do. Think carefully before we talk. You may eat wrong food, but you cannot talk wrong stick, wrong words. You know what? When we have, when our mind has, you know, let, then we can forgive easily. Especially the one you love the most. You will suffer the most if that person hurt you. Is that true? You know, if, let's say, I meet you today, maybe first day, you say something wrong to me, I'm sad, but I will never hate you, like, I will never keep in my heart, my mind, because first time we meet. But if one of my close students, if he done something wrong, he say something wrong, I may hurt the most. And that hurt may stay with me longer. So, you know, if you are the son, if you are the daughter, if you are the brother, the sister, husband and wife, and because of your unmindful speech, unmindful action, you may hurt that person the most. So therefore, the sensory impression, the third nutriment, what we call intention. We all have the intention to follow whether good intention or bad intention. If a good intention that nourishes, 
that keep us in a good shape, in a good practice. So some intention very positive, some intention very negative. Let's say, you say, I want to become a doctor. So you want to become a doctor, become your good intention. So because you want to become a doctor, what happened? You would try to work and study hard until you receive your diploma, your degree as a doctor. So we all have the intention to cultivate. When I was young, do you know what is my intention? I only want to become a monk. This is my only intention I have in my mind since I'm seven. So when I'm eight, I told my mom, I want to become a monk. And so my mom said, no, 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 you're too young. You have to wait until you graduate from high school. And you have to go to Canada, because at that time I was in Vietnam. And my mom told me, if you want to become a monk, you wait until you come to Canada. But that kid in me. After I arrived in Canada, when I'm 12, after I finished grade 9, I told my mom, my dad, one day after I finished my grade 9, my last day of school, I have two months break for summer, and I want to move in the temple. So I want to tell my parents as soon as I can. So I invite my both parents sit down, and I knew them. When I knew them in front of them, my mom know right away, you want to become a monk? <laughs> she know, because since I was young, my all family know that one day I will become a monk. Because every single day, what I have done, what I do is related to temple. You know, I see the monk wearing the robe. I don't have the robe, I use my blanket. <laughs> I use my blanket, I wrap myself and I pretend I'm a monk. And the monk used to have the arming bowl. I don't have the arming bowl. I use the coconut shell. <laughs> and I, when I was young, about five, six, seven, I see people holding the incense and offer the incense to the Buddha. I don't have the incense. I use the incense stick, you know, the remaining one, and pretend this is the incense that I bought. I saw people ringing the bell. I don't have the bell. I use the rock. I knock on the the electric pole, so it makes the sound like the bell. So my mom, my dad, did not allow me to become a monk, even after I finished with her. So sad. One day I told my teacher, my hair grow long, I want to go to the barber shop. He said, why do you need to waste money? I can do it for you. I have an electric razor. So he used the razor, he tried to cut my hair. Accidentally, he cut a bunch down here, and he tried to fix. The more he fixed, the more he shaved me. <laughs> so after an hour he fixed, my hair looked like a coconut shell, <laughs> round like this. Looked like a pulp. No hair down here, just up here. When I go home, my dad looked at my head and he said, Who cut your hair? <laughs> I said, the monk at the temple, he so, looked so ugly. I told my dad, can I shave? He said, of course. <laughs> because he rather me shave, look better than keep the hair like that. So I used that advantage. He thought, after I shave, that means I become a monk. I have a small razor. I afraid that my dad will ask me to grow hair again. Every day I shave because I don't want my hair to grow again. My desire to become a monk. So because when I really want to become a monk, I live my way, my life, so when I have become a monk, I'm so happy. That's why, you know, even now, you know, Tao Ho, I never can. <laughs> I still can eat tofu. If one day you say, oh, I don't like tofu, that means something wrong. 
and you are vegetarian and you must like tofu. I love my robe, so every time when I put on my yellow robe, I'm so happy. I, so, I feel so happy when I able to still can put on my robe for my prayer. I love my, my, my monk's robe. I love Tung Kinh. You know Tung Kinh? Tung Kinh means I pray. I know you guys love iPad. I know you guys love iPhone. But myself, I love I pray. <laughs> so we all have intention, but make sure we have a positive intention. Then what is that intention become? It's become the nutriment to nourish us, to move us on. We never refuse even though we have to overcome many obstacles and hard times. I have a lot of uh, friends, brothers, sisters, as I know, they come from Vietnam. Their parents send them from Vietnam to America, to Australia, to study. They are having their v student visa. They have no relatives here. Their parents only afford their school fee, but they cannot afford their daily living. They have to go to work. They work at the restaurant as a, 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 a waiter, a waitress. They work two jobs in order to make money to help themselves to survive for living, daily living. After 15 years, they graduate. Now they have a good job. They have a good family. They're able to, you know, permanently immigrants in America, in Canada, in Australia. I met a lot of them. And they told me, sometimes they go back home, they cry along with their meal. I can understand that. Because that happened to me exactly the same when I first came to Canada. I miss Vietnam. I miss my temple. I cry every day, I want to go back. And I remember one morning, my, my father asked me, Honey, don't you love me? Why do you always want to go back to Vietnam? I said, Vietnam have temple. <laughs> Canada no temple. <laughs> Canada no monks. The first day after one night, I stayed in Edmonton in Canada. The next morning, I told my, my dad, I want to have an altar, to set up the altar, to, to, make the, to put the Buddha on the so I can do my prayer. So I want to share with you about the intention. All of us, we have intention. But we must know what kind of intention we are in order to keep us in a good shape. If you want to success, you want your future to be good, do not refuse study. You have to think. If you enjoy, if you skip school for one day, what happened to your mark? What happened to your homework? You know, even this trip, I really want to bring some of my students along with me to help me. I have one older student. He is 27 now. He graduated from university. And he take another year to learn how to make, uh, you know, websites to help for the temple. I asked him to go with me to help Thai for three weeks. And he said, I can't Thai because I have a lot of homework, a lot of work to do. Just even a year, I have to accept that because I cannot expect him to follow me and skip his school. So once you know you want something for your future, then make sure all of that things, you know, aside with you, you have to be careful, reject. Sometimes you have to say no to your friends because you have homework. You have to say no to something because you know this no is a positive no, it's not a negative no. 
Do you understand what I tried to say? You know, when I was in high school, a lot of girls followed me. <laughs> and one day they come to my locker and she used her lip and kiss under there and she, she draw a, a, a heart. She put my name and her name in there. But at that time, you know, I loved, the, I loved my master more than that girl. <laughs> There was a young boy who stayed with his master in the mountain for a long time. He did not know anything about the city. So his master felt sorry for him. So one day he made the decision to bring him down to the city so he can witness a lot of things around. So when he bring him down to Melbourne, to the city, he's so surprised. What is this? Oh, this is bicycle, his master explained. This is car, this is bicycle, this is building, this is a restaurant. So many things that Master explained. Suddenly he turned around and he met a beautiful girl. He asked his Master, what is this? The Master, no, this is a tiger. Very mean, mean tiger. He brought him back to the mountain. He started to stop eating. He stopped eating, he stopped prayer, he stopped everything. He just lying in bed, like ready to die. <laughs> the master come and say, Honey, my, my darling, why? What happened to you? Are you sick? You need help? He turned around and said, Master, I miss that tiger. <laughs> <laughs> this is a story in the temple. Street secret. We all have intention. If you know that you want to build a happy family because you are a married man, you have husband, you have wife, you have children, then make sure your family is first. Sometimes you need to say no to something is not possible for you to do. The fourth nutriment what we call the consciousness. What is consciousness? You're in touch with the environment around you. If you live in the environment, a healthy environment, you also benefit from that healthy environment. If you contact with unhealthy environment, you also will be in a healthy environment. I have um, about 15 young boys that stay with me since they were 6, 7, and 8. When I'm only 25, I take care of 10 boys by myself. They're too young. I play as a mother, as a father, as a teacher. I make lunch for them every day. I make dinner for them. I wash their clothes. I bring them to school. I pick them up. I do everything as a single mom. <laughs> when I go anywhere, 10 of them follow me. And they say, your kid? I say, yeah. <laughs> you too young. Yeah, I'm single dad. <laughs> when I heard some of them why when want to withdraw the monk's living, the monk's life, I try everything. Sometimes they go back home and they swear. I heard. I asked them where you learned this. I never teach. They told me they learn from their friends. That's why we know if you are not a saint, we're still human. The environment around us is very important. If we are mindful enough, we will find a good environment for us to live in. 
You know when I come to Canada, I don't know anything. I don't speak English at all. I only know Monday to Saturday. Every time when I see people, I say hello Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's all I can speak to them. Even after I graduate, and a lot of Canadians came to me and say they want me to conduct a meditation session so they can come and learn. And I thought, if I don't speak English, how can I help them? I say, I don't care how much English I have. I conduct Friday meditation session. They come to me every Friday, and I just start to speak English. If I speak wrong, they correct me. You know, same thing. If you know how to choose good friends, they will help you to correct yourself. This is what we learn from. A three person walk on the street. One person in that three will be one person will be our teacher. You can learn something from that person. So that's why to me, every people around here, even the youngest, he or she still can be my teacher. I can learn something from that person. Brothers, sisters, friends, I just want to inform we all need food every day to live. With our food we die. But the, we can skip the food for a few days, but we cannot skip water. We need water more than food. But we still can we can still can away from drinking maybe two or three days, but we cannot stop breathing. If we stop breathing, we die right away. You can stop drinking for a day, but you cannot stop breathing even for a few minutes. Then what happened here? Learning is the most important. We cannot stop breathing. The same as we cannot stop learning. Because the more we learn, the more we understand. The more we understand, the more we live better. The more we live better, the more we make our life and others' life possible. To me, learn to live. Live to learn. We learn in order to live. And what is the purpose of living? To learn. So no matter how old we are, learning is still very important. With our learning, we know nothing. And the more we learn, the more we can share too. The Buddhist practice is not something high that you cannot reach. What is Buddha? Buddha means the one who awake. The one who is able to live mindfully and happily in the present moment. You are very lucky. We are very lucky. We have a whole complete body. We still can see, can hear, can taste, can touch, can feel. We have a good family. We still can go to school. Our daily life very full. Then please do not waste and do not damage. If we are not mindful enough, we may damage, we may ruin our fortunate. We are very fortunate, don't we? Do you feel that you are very fortunate? We are very fortunate to have a family, to have husband, to have wife, to have parents, to have brothers, sisters. 
But the point here is, how do I live with this fortunate? It's like you already have the eyes. Now the question is, how can I use my eyes wisely? I have two legs to walk. How can I use my legs wisely? So that's why when you're taking refuge, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, each of you will have a Dharma name. The Dharma name means live according to your name. Live your life according to your name. Let's say some of you may name Pam. Pam means the heart. We live in this life not only by material, but also by the heart. Using your heart, your living heart, to act, to behave, to talk. Today, first, as first, we never expect that to have this gathering. But because I know that we still have some time on this Saturday, so I have an idea that we can arrange this evening so we can share. Please do not think this is the, 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 the hour to lecture you. I only wish that I can share with you something within my practice. Whatever I practice, I benefit from it, I share with you. This is not, you know, the time for me to lecture you. But this is the time for me to share my happiness of the practice with all of you. And remember, the word practice is something we can do right now. Try to do something. I have organized a lot of teenager retreats in Canada. Some of the teenagers, the parents send them there. They cry every meal. You know why? They never have vegetarian before. They never eat tofu, they never eat vegetable completely cold day like this. Maybe sometimes one meal, two meal, but you know, day to day like this, they cry. One day I come to them and they say, why you cry? I hate tofu. <laughs> I say, just try. Just try. Three days later, he smiled, he eat, and he talk. I, I come close to him and say, what happened to tofu now? Oh, I love tofu now. <laughs> So everything is a try. We never try. We never know. We never train. We never success. Never expect. Everything can come to completely and successful on the first day. So if you have something wrong to yourself, if you have a wrong intention, if you have a negative intention already, if you love your parents, if you love your mom, you love your dad, you love your family, you're willing to put down your negative, and you're willing to try again to make your intention become positive. Do not wait until your loved one die. To tell them thousands of words from love, they cannot feel it. Only a living person can feel it. Even you write a beautiful, beautiful poem on the monument, the piece of rock, the piece of stone cannot fill your words. Only the living does. Thank you so much for your time, for listening, and allowing me to share with you briefly my practice. So I want to share with you about the communication. Make sure, even though we have a lot of technology to communicate, but that is not the one they can feel. 
try to talk with each other more, try to share whatever we need to, because life is short. If you have a broken iPhone, you can find one, another one. But you cannot find another person from your love. You can change anything, but you cannot change your mom. You cannot change your dad. You cannot change your family, your loved one. Technology helps us to communicate in an emergency way. But any chance we still communicate, use communicate. Before, I never used phone. No email either. But later on, I feel that my traveling increased. Then I need to contact home. I need to know what happened in my family temple so I can help. So I use technology right. So I hope that because our life is limited, our capacity also limited, technology unlimited. We must know how much we need in order to tame our desire. Only when we're able to tame all the anger, the desire, we can truly create the truly happiness for your family and for yourself. I have a question here. This person shared that. As much as I try to keep calm and be grateful, but there are always others who want to put me down, step all over me. I therefore have to stand up and tell them firmly to stop with those behaviors. In this, is this okay or can you please suggest a better way to handle this? This is related to our communication. At work also. If you need to express your feeling about the behavior, it's all right for you to share. But of course, we never, we always use loving speech to share with them. We never, you know, against them with the very heavy words because that is not how we were born. As a human, if you disagree with something, you can stand up and share. But before you share, you must tell their good points first. Why? Make them feel comfortable before they accept the negative points we're willing to share with them. If your mom accidentally cooked something too salty, instead of yelling, Mom, what are you doing? It's too salty. You can tell mom. Your mom will say, is this good? You say, yeah, just a little bit salty. It's another way to express it's salty. But try to express the words in such a way that people willing to accept your correction. It's all right to correct the others, but try to correct them in such a way that they feel comfortable. Why? I just always remind myself one, one sentence. Anything I don't want, I never do for others. So anything we do not want, try not to do to others. This is the rule. If you want to people to say hello to you first, why don't you say hello to them first? Don't wait until they hello to you. Act as a human. We meet people on the street, we can say hello. Then why can we say hello to people at work? You want people to treat you good, treat them good first. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good evening and enjoy the weekend. Can I, uh, can we all learn a small song together? This song called Dear Friends is very uh, simple. Dear friends, dear friends, let me tell you how I feel. 
You have given me such treasure. I love you so. And let me sing once and then you can follow me to sing together. Dear friends, dear friends, let me tell you how I feel. You have given me such treasure. I love you so. On three, two, three. Dear friends, dear friends, let me tell you how I feel. You have given me such treasure. I love you so. Can we sing a few more times louder? <laughs> dear friends, dear friends, let me tell you how I feel. You have given me such treasure. I love you so. I love you so. You're so weak. <laughs> I know you don't love me that much. <laughs> This is a song called Happiness is Here and Now to invite us to live in the present moment. I would like to offer you this song, Happiness is Here and Now. Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. No longer in a hurry. Too bad you know where to go. <laughs> Nothing to do. Stay here more, few minutes. <laughs> Happiness is here now. I have dropped my worry. Somewhere to go, something to do. But no need to hurry. Happiness is here now. I have dropped my worries. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. No longer in a hurry. Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Somewhere to go, something to do. But no need to hurry. I have a note here that someone would like to present a song. Can I invite this person? If you have a note here for Thai. And we will have a song here for Thai. And we will have a song So just relax yourself, okay? Relax yourself. To enjoy the song. This, uh, this couple, they just take a, a very um, new song. Nít đi tu sướng hơn người lớn Nít tu có một mũi mà được kẹo nè Hình như có chuỗi đâu phải không? Có chuỗi cho mấy cái nhỏ nữa Rồi mời hai vị nha Dạ, yeah, Ai Phật, thưa Thầy à, Đây là bài hát mà chúng con mới làm hồi tối hôm qua thôi Thành ra hồi sáng này thì mới có tập giờ có một tiếng đồng hồ thôi Nên chắc không có được hoàn chỉnh lắm Thì cái bài hát này là gồm chúng con làm để chia tay với Thầy Yeah. Xin đại diện hết tất cả Phật tử ở Melbourne nói riêng và Úc Châu nói chung là con xin được cảm ơn và à, chia tay cùng Thầy. À, 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, girls and boys, uh, we are about to perform a song uh, for our master. Uh, this song is uh, just to say thank you and goodbye the master. So this is a Vietnamese song, so excuse us and uh, thank you for listening. Biết nói gì đây, giây phút chia tay Mọi người chán chứa bao niềm vui vẫn thương Ước gì thời gian ngừng lại Giờ mai nơi đây bao niềm thương nhớ hoài Tiếng hát hòa chúng lời cuối cho nhau Giờ này vương vấn trong không gian phép màu Biết rằng họ tăng lẽ thường Nguyện giữ trong tâm lòng kính yêu mến thầy sau này có thời gian sẽ qua thăm thầy nếu thuần duyên cánh xa muôn trùng bên lòng tin tao cùng mang tiếng ca trong bình an trong phật pháp vĩnh hằng đóng góp bàn tay say đắm Lời thầy luôn mãi là hành trang giúp con Mỗi ngày lòng thêm khắc đậm Lời Phật truyền trao theo con xuống đời Đông ngôn bàn tay Lời thầy luôn mãi là hành trang giúp con Mỗi ngày lòng thêm khắc đậm Lời Phật truyền trao theo con xuống đời Lời Phật truyền trao theo con xuống À, kính thưa đại chúng, à, hôm nay thì à, có một số phật tử có hình như có mấy sự chuỗi hay là phần quà cho các em không biết cách tặng như thế nào thì Uh, some uh, candies and uh, a prayer bit uh, from some of the members who uh, so happy to hear that uh, many young friends come here this uh, afternoon to join the, the session. So they would like to offer you, uh, you know, yes, this would be. Okay, thank you. Of um, all the young friends, uh, I would like to um, uh, offer you, uh, present to you this is like a small gift from Thai with the um, a, a bookmark. If you do not have one yet, uh, please uh, take one. It's uh, the gift I brought up to, from Canada. And for those who are uh, senior members, uh, you will have the privilege. We be lớn tuổi đó thì mỗi vị sẽ có một sâu chuỗi. À, riêng các à, em bạn trẻ thì thầy có một cái bút móc thì mình có cái kẹo 
để làm quà cho chúng nó nha. Thank you. À, thưa đại chúng chương trình ngày mai chúng ta bắt đầu lúc uh, mấy giờ sư? Ngày 10 giờ sáng ngày mai cho tới 5 giờ chiều tại vườn Rain Ho, tức là cái ho mà tuần trước đó nha. Yeah. Tomorrow uh, there will be a full day of practice in the Ukrainian hall, at the Ukrainian hall, the hall that we use for plastic, from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. So if you have time, please come and join us. Thank you. Please stand up. I'm going to let you know if I can do that. Can I invite you to join the hall like this? Uh, this is the uh, the palm. It's like a flower come from your heart, and uh, we all present this flower come from our heart every time we meet each other. So this is how the, we are greeting to each other. Thank you so much. So we also are greeting to the Buddha. Rồi, mấy đứa con ngay chưa có cái bút hết Hello, dạ xin mời các em nhỏ bước lên để nhận những cái phần kẹo của thầy cho anh Nhi được rồi Rồi các vị Phật tử thì mỗi người sẽ được một phân chuỗi